My name is David Ettinger. I'm going to talk about auctions and revenue. Auction was a widespread way to allocate goods. However, there are many auction formats with different rules and properties. We introduce them quickly in a related video. In order to choose among them, one must first characterize the seller's objective. When somebody sells an object through an auction, usually his main concern is the revenue that he is going to derive from the auction process. This is obvious for a private firm or an individual. This may be less so for a benevolent central planner who cares about efficiency, whether the good is allocated to the right person. However, even for the state, the amount of money that can be raised matters. Any euro that is lost by the state because he sells his belongings for a low price will have to be obtained through a different channel, creating taxes and distortions. Therefore, for any seller, the revenue is a key dimension of the auction. It is natural to ask auction specialists what is the auction format that maximizes the seller's expected revenue. We will see that even though auction theory provides some result about this question, unfortunately, there is no miraculous auction formats which provide the highest possible expected revenue in any environment. But we'll first begin with the revenue equivalence theory. This first major result have been obtained by auction theorists in a famous paper by Roger Myerson in 1981, which was the first presenting this result, but many others were thinking about it at the same time. So what does it say? It says that even though a seller may only care about his expected revenue, even in that case, it is not possible to disentangle the allocation and the revenue issue. More precisely, if two auction formats allocate the good for sale the same way, they will also provide the same expected revenue to the seller. This is what we call the revenue equivalence theorem. This result seems very simple, but it is an extremely powerful and useful tool. Let me illustrate this point with an example. Suppose that the second price auction and the first price auction both always allocate the good for sale to the bidder with the highest valuation for the good. Then, on average, they will provide the same revenue for the seller when some nice assumptions are satisfied. We can go even further. If you design any auction format, we went with very strange rules. And these auction formats always allocate the good to the seller with the highest valuation. Then these auction formats will give, on average, the same revenue to the seller than any standard ascending auction that will also allocate the good to the bidder with the highest valuation. Again, if two auction formats allocate the good the same way, they will provide on average, the same revenue to the seller. Now, do these auction formats that allocate the good to the bidder with the highest valuation give the highest expected revenue to the seller? If this were the case, we would be done. Unfortunately, this is not the case. In order to illustrate that an auction format that allocates goods to the highest bidder does not maximize revenue, we'll use a very simple example. Suppose that a seller wants to sell two goods, A and B. There are two possible buyers for the good, one and two. We denote VA1, the valuation for the good A, for buyer one. VA2, the valuation of good A, for buyer two. V, B1, the valuation of good B for buyer one, and so on. 
A simple way to allocate efficiently the good is to run two consecutive second price auctions for these two goods. For each good, the buyer with the highest valuation will win the auction and pay the submission of the other player, which should be equal to his valuation for the good. Eventually, the revenue will be equal to mean of VA1, VA2, the revenue obtained for the good A, plus mean of VB1, VB2, the revenue obtained for the auction of good B. Now, let us consider a slightly different way to allocate the two goods. Suppose that the seller put the two goods together and organize a second price auction for this package. Again, the best thing that the two bidders can do is to submit a bid equal to their valuation for the package. VA1 plus VB1 for bidder 1 and VA2 plus VB2 for bidder 2. So that the revenue will be equal to the mean of VA1 plus VB1, which is the submission of bidder 1, and VA2 plus VB2, which is the submission of bidder 2. But this is higher than what we mentioned before, mean of VA1, VA2, plus mean of VB1, VB2. So the revenue with a two independent second price auction is lower. As a matter of fact, either it is the same bidder who has the lowest valuation for the goods, for the two goods, and in that case the revenue is the same with the two types of auction, or it is a different bidder who has the lowest valuation for each good, and the package auction gives a higher revenue. Now, thanks to the equivalence revenue theorem, we did not only prove that the package auction gives a higher revenue than the two independent auction. We also proved that no efficient auction here can maximize the expected revenue of the seller. As a matter of fact, using two independent second price auction is an efficient way to allocate the good and give an expected revenue equal to mean of VA1, VA2 plus mean of VB1, VB2. Therefore, if we apply the revenue equivalence theorem, this means that any efficient auction will give exactly the same expected revenue. But this revenue is lower than mean of VA1 plus VB1 and VA2 plus VB2 that can be obtained with a package auction. So the auction format that maximizes the expected revenue of the seller cannot be efficient. Now, what as a result is a more standard case. We showed that in a very simple case, choosing an efficient auction doesn't give us the highest revenue. But what do we have in general? Now, that we prove that it is not possible in general to maximize both efficiency and the seller of revenue, can we suggest an auction format that would maximize expected revenue? Unfortunately, we have no general robust result. The auction format that maximizes expected revenue depends on the context. However, in standard cases, where bidder are ex-ante symmetric and risk neutral, we can show with some technicalities that a simple first price auction or second price auction with a well-chosen reserve price maximize the seller's expected revenue.